Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and I have a thrift haul to share with you. I've been thrifting two times in the past two weeks and both times I haven't gotten a lot so that's why I've saved it for one video. So my husband asked me to be on the lookout for a kindling holder and I had remembered seeing something similar to this at my favorite thrift store. So I was able to find it. Um, John sometimes puts stuff out on the sidewalk so people driving by can see it and stop in and then he changes his displays a lot. So I don't know if this is the one that I had actually noticed outside a few weeks ago or not. Um, he did say that he actually had some newer ones that someone bought to use as ice buckets and that this one um, they thought was older. So it was $65 and they did have a brass bucket that would have worked as well for 35 but I just kind of debated for a little bit like do I buy the more expensive one and I did because it was just really nice copper. Um, it was exactly what I needed and I thought well if I buy this one I mean I couldn't imagine anything like better or nicer to try and upgrade to so I purchased it and copper is one of those things that I'd like to add more to my house so when I went to pay for it I had asked John if he thought it was old or new just because the the copper looks so good and he had said that um, he thought it looked handmade he thought um, there were like some some rivets in a piece that were like added on to patch it and he also said that the owner of the shop thought it was from the late 1800s. So I heard all of that and I thought, well, I like it and I need it, so I'm going to go for it. So I typed in some, you know, words to describe it into the internet and I actually found about three or four pictures of stuff that looked just like this. Um, the shape of the body, the way the base was attached. Um, this looked just like the uh, items that they were calling a Victorian coal scuttle and there were different variations on this piece here and there was also one that had a handle that was exactly the same so I uh, couldn't believe it and the prices were from the upper 300s all the way to almost $700 and uh, a few pictures had nice shiny ones even though they were antiques and then some were uh, really covered in that coal dust and the shine had gone away so I'm just so happy that I got one of the ones in good condition for $65. And when you looked at the pictures they had online, um, you could see like all the, the black kind of coal dust that had gotten down into the little pieces, just like the texture of the metal right in there. So it's got all those signs, but definitely in great shape. And as soon as I brought it home, my husband loved it. He filled it with kindling and we've already had two fires since we've had it for mm, three days. <laughs> I'm asking my daughter. So these are useful and I have a need for these. I'm trying to switch over most of my cooking utensils to silicone so they don't scrape my enameled cast iron pots. And I found these two and I really liked the way they looked. I liked the wood with the metal with the white. They were priced at a dollar a piece. And I normally don't Google brands or names when I'm at the store. You know, I buy things because I like them. I have a need for them. I think that they're a good deal. But I was curious about this brand and it's Schmidt Brothers Kitchen. And you know, it just looked like a quality piece. I think they have their own website, but it also looked like they sold these at Williams Sonoma, and I love anything from there. So that was a no-brainer at a dollar. So I've already washed those up, and I will probably handle. So I wash them in the dishwasher. I normally put my inexpensive ones in the dishwasher, even if they're wood, and I really had no problem. But I think I will hand wash these, and I'm going to do a little mineral oil on the wood to bring them back to life. I've just rubbed a little bit of food grade mineral oil on the one and you can see how it really brings it back to life. This was the last thing that I picked up in my most recent thrift trip. I paid $15 for the box and it is full of seashells. I also found these boxes for a dollar a piece and I plan on doing something for YouTube and also for work with these. So I don't wanna give it away. It is inspired by another article in Victorian Homes Magazine, so I'll be making a separate video on that. But this is lots of artistic media for me. These items I found the week before while I was thrifting. 
So both weeks I've only found about five things. So that's why I decided to save it up. So when I shared my video about collecting dressing table antiques, in the magazine, there were some of these mirrored vanity trays. And I had commented that they had one at the thrift store, but it was not for sale. Well, when I went, the little tag that said not for sale was gone. So I found uh, the mirror for $9. And I just think it's so beautiful, especially with that detailed edge. So it's beveled and then it's notched down. So pretty. So I decided to display some of my jewelry caskets and other things that I shared in that video, but I also have some new treasures. So the first is this bottle stopper. I had um, my eye on it since I think before Thanksgiving. And when I looked at that article in Victorian Homes Magazine, and if you didn't watch that video, I will link it where you can see me flipping through the pages. But there was a beautiful vanity set that had this blue glass. So researching it just a little bit, um, it appears that it might be bohemian glass um, or some people call it Czech glass. When I was looking at this, I thought about how I would make it. And it really appears that it's clear glass covered with blue and then you cut a design away um, or you just cut a portion away to reveal the clear glass again. And a lot of the descriptions online were calling it um, blue cut to clear. So um, I picked up the stopper and it's very funny. It's just like the coal scuttle where um, it was in one spot. And then when I finally decided to get it, it had moved and luckily it was still there. So I said to John, there's this blue and white stopper. And he just reached down and found it for me. You'll also notice um, that I did take off the Tiffany box from my assemblage. I replaced it with a different box, and now I have this one on display. I picked up this cut glass, I don't know, vase. I'm really into cut glass. I don't have a lot, and I, um, when I saw this, I was trying to think about some uses before I purchased it, and I did think it would be nice to display these little mother-of-pearl manicure pieces and vanity pieces of file and some tweezers. I also thought that sometimes it's nice uh, when I pluck a flower or my kids pluck a flower from outside, a little rose or some lavender would be nice in that, even some dried lavender. I did pick up some flatware. I'm just always drawn to the handles. And uh, there is another article in the Victoria magazines that showcases coin silver. And um, I thought that I would share my collection of just flatware in another video as well. So I've gotten lots of video inspiration from these magazines. So I picked these up. Um, I was just really drawn to that shape. And Pottery Barn has uh, a similar set. I don't know if they still sell it. It's actually a five piece set where each handle is different. And for some reason, this piece reminds me of a piece that was in that set for $95. So you could go to the thrift store and put together a five piece set for $5. Now, this is not a piece that I would use just because that base metal is starting to show through. I wouldn't want to cut with that, but really nice pieces in excellent condition like this could definitely be used. And Pottery Barn, in my opinion, um, you know, it's a mix of styles, but it definitely has that nod to a vintage look. And I feel like this is a piece that Pottery Barn would totally reproduce. And then I picked this piece up. It's very interesting. This one I definitely believe is cut from like a sheet of metal. It's very lightweight and uniform in thickness. And it has some hand engraving. And this one is very heavy. Um, I believe it's solid actually. So those pieces were probably about 50 cents or so and I have an idea to put those in a shadow box to hang in the kitchen to cover up the phone jack. And the last piece was this frame and I purchased it. Um, I, will pr I will probably change it a little bit but not too much. I'm thinking about painting the frame but the more I look at it I think it might just stay the same. I just don't want it to feel too dark when I put it up, but then if I paint it, I don't want to lose the beautiful details. I love the velvet. You can see that it's a maroon purple color, and then it does have some domed glass in it. So I did take the um, frame off so I could clean the glass, 
and then it's got a little template for me. So I'd love to put a piece of jewelry under here. I don't think that the dome though is high enough. Um, so for right now, it is something that I'm just hanging on to until the right thing comes along to frame. And then I just randomly have this little thing. I was uh, making some art a while ago and I needed a typewritten, typewritten paper, but I loved that line and I didn't, I wanted to save it for something else, so I cut it out. But I thought, wouldn't that be fun? Whatever I framed in here, if that was added, because I love contrast, um, textures and styles. I love like the simplicity and the machine age feeling of typewritten words, and then this fancy ornate frame with the lush velvet. So who knows? That might become some type of mixed media piece. But for now, I uh, you know it's in my project pile. I hope you enjoyed seeing all this stuff, getting some inspiration, uh, and I'll see all of you in another video. Bye.